right, folks, buckle up. It's going to get philosophical here. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day. And today it is the sixth day of the Advent calendar of Christmas horror movies as we count down to the 25th. And today we are reviewing the 2013 movie Krampus the Christmas Devil. <sighs> Okay, so here's the deal. One thing I noticed last year when I started doing my advent calendar of Christmas horror movies is that by focusing strictly on Christmas horror movies, the ratio of good to bad got heavily skewed uh, away from the norms. And this year, oh, wow. Okay, so (laughs) there's only a finite number of Christmas horror movies out there. And I'll be honest, I kind of picked some of the top, you know, top earners... (laughs) in the first year so this year uh man i I feel like i'm dredging the bottom of the lake i'm coming up with silt and fish bones and not a whole lot else uh but uh regardless i kind of knew what i was in for and here we go this is one of the things that i recognized i was going to get myself into and believe me reviewing this movie watching this movie was a masochistic uh endeavor so uh clearly I did not care for this motion picture, <laughs> uh, but I, I have to explain it a little bit more. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the struggles that I had, honestly, in trying to figure out what I was even going to say about this one and certainly how I was going to score it, because this one really be flummoxed me. I recorded my review of this. I already recorded this. This is my second go around. I recorded it this morning. And you know how you have those things where you'll have an argument with somebody and then a day after you'll think about, Oh, I should have said that. Oh, I should have said that. Oh, I should have said that. Well, that was me after recording my review of this. Oh, geez. I meant to hit that point. Oh, I, did, I should have t- mentioned that. And <clears throat> ultimately I decided I'm going to go ahead and go to work, work my full shift, come home, make dinner and re-record. And that's what I'm doing now. So the reason that this one be flummoxed me is because it was just so bad, but I couldn't quite tell about the intent. And this is the kind of thing where, you know, I always say one of the reasons I have the intent score is so that I'm able to judge horror movies away from the traditional critical, you know, palm leaf, uh, you know, awards kind of thing and, you know, just have fun with it. You know, if a movie's just trying to be fun, I want to give it points for that. If it was at least able to do that. Uh, And, you know, I think that's something that kind of gets overlooked in a lot of uh, critical reviews of films is what was it even trying to do and how well did it do it? Was it trying to be a good movie? Was it trying to be a silly movie? Was it trying to be a fun movie? And then how well did it succeed at that? (sighs) And here's the thing about Krampus the Christmas Devil. I could not determine what it was trying to do because I was really kind of on the fence with this one. If it was trying to be a decent movie or even a, uh, you know, interesting, somewhat scary, gore-infested kind of horror film for the low-budget masses, I would say that it absolutely failed on every regard. It was absolutely terrible on every single bullet point I can think of. Screenwriting, dialogue writing, camera work, lighting work, sound design, acting, special effects, editing, everything about it was an absolute misfire and miserable. But what if, what if it was trying to be a bad movie? Well, then surely I should be able to give it some points for that. So now here I have my conundrum. If it was trying to be a bad movie, how do I approach that? How do I tackle that? And I had to meditate on this for a little bit. I had to really think about it because I could honestly see some people come back and say that, well, it was trying to be a bad movie. It was trying to be a movie that was so bad that it was good. The kind of thing that people could laugh at with their friends. And I think that there's some merit in that. I think that having that quality, and I will say, one thing I will absolutely say, and you won't hear me say any different, is that 2013's Krampus the Christmas Devil is a movie that you can laugh at with your friends. This is a great movie to riff on. But does that make it a movie that deserves points? So uh, what I ultimately came down to was uh, while well, I started looking up my past reviews. I want to remain consistent, or at least as consistent as I can be, you know, considering that, you know, over the years people change and opinions change and I might grow and change with that. But I kind of want to remain somewhat consistent in my, you know, scoring system. 
So I started looking up re- movies that had high intention scores and low overall scores. And kind of trying to determine, well, what is the you know contributing factor of that? What set that apart that made that so bad, but at the same time achieve what it set out to do so well? And one of the best ones that I found that I reviewed was... Dead Squad, The Temple of the Undead. And I thought, well, there's a perfect example. That's a movie that was just terrible, but man, was it fun. You know, Nazi zombies in an underground jungle temple and like, undead zombie fellatio. It was just a wild, wild, crazy ride that was absolutely fun from start to finish. So what, make, what would make me judge that differently than this? Because I honestly want to. It's a gut feeling. I feel like that one is worthy of scores. This one is not. So what's the difference between the two? And ultimately what it came down to is this notion. If you're trying to make a silly movie and you do it well, that is a big, big difference between purposefully setting out to make a bad movie. If you are trying actively to make a movie that is Uh, upending the normal critical reviews and instead you just want to make a fun movie about killer zombies that are Nazis and live in an underground temple and you do a good job with the silliness factor and you do a good job with the humor and you have sharp dialogue and you have good special effects and you really put your all into that that's a big difference than purposefully making a bad movie And that's going on the assumption that that's what this movie was trying to do. So I think I landed in a place where I had a safe score philosophy going on here. Either it was trying to be a decent movie and it failed, or it was trying to be a bad movie, and I don't feel like awarding it any points for that. I don't think that that's a noble endeavor. So I'm going to go ahead and throw up all the scores here. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And the the intent, I think, speaks for itself. I really can't give it any points. No matter what it was trying to achieve, either it was, like I said, inept or it was not a noble endeavor. And I do consider to be, you know, a a slash them up, uh, gore fest, fun time in the horror movie genre, a noble endeavor. I'm a horror movie reviewer. I live and breathe that kind of stuff. But this is not the kind of movie that I can abide by if it was on purpose even if I would say that it would be fun to riff on. Because I think the ultimate difference is the fact that if I do riff on this with friends, I am not laughing with the movie, I am laughing at it. It is ridiculous on its face, and it's not because of sharp humor or biting dialogue or ridiculous situations. It's simply because of how amateurish and cheap and mistake-ridden this film is. So to give this movie a five-mile overview, we have the main character of policeman Jeremy Duffin, who, when he was a child, was basically put in a sack by Krampus and tossed into the river, Rover Dangerfield style, and managed to escape. Uh, Certain death loomed above him, and he managed to make his way out of the lake and live his life. And now he is a grown man and a detective, and he is tracking down a nationwide manhunt of a mysterious kidnapper of children. And without any evidence whatsoever, he basically makes the tie-in that this is what happened to him when he was a kid. And this is the person that did that when he was a kid. Everything about this was absolutely wrong. Just flat out, on a factual level, I mean, it broke the... It constantly broke uh, continuity errors. It constantly broke logic... (laughs) Uh, You know, they would knock on, you know, he would knock on the door of his chief's office and it would be a solid wood door. Then the camera would switch over to the other side as he's letting himself in and there'd be a big glass window in the middle of the door. Just continuity errors like that up the yin yang. The editing was absolutely painful. It would constantly have scenes in which we are only hitting a certain heartbeat of time in advance. Usually things like an angle cut. And instead of having an angle cut and basically just, you know, snap, we're now at the next angle and we continue on with the action, it would fade to black and then fade back in. And it would seem like days have passed, but nope, we're just at a different angle. And that happened all the time. Things would absolutely make no sense whatsoever. The beginning scene of him acting as a detective was him being called from home to let them him know that another child was missing. So, does he go to the scene of a crime? Does he interview the parents? Does he talk with forensics experts? Does he do anything of the sort? Nope. He goes right into his chief's office and looks at a big map with 
haphazard sticky notes on it. And that's the evidence. That's what he's going on. And that's where he draws the conclusion that that's what happened to him when he was a kid. And then he goes home and he looks at a map of the entire United States of America with pictures just kind of pasted everywhere. So as far as he's concerned, there's a cluster of them that are missing in Kansas, some of them in Topeka, some of them in Kansas City. It doesn't really matter any kind of detail or anything. It's just there. <sighs> All logic is tossed out the window. And don't get me started on the Krampus and Santa connection, because as bad as Krampus was in this movie, man, Santa was an absolute dick. Just going up to kids that are in cages about ready to be slaughtered, like, well, it's your fault. You were bad. Help you, but you were bad. You were bad. Uh... Oh my God, you know, typically you have kind of the Krampus and the Santa as two sides of the same coin, but at odds with one another. And in this case, Krampus is like Santa's henchman. It's like, well, he deserves it. You go get him. Like, wow, what a dick. I mean, even if the kid was bad, geez, come on, Santa, you're supposed to be jolly. So the, everything about it was just honestly just hitting the wrong notes and doing it in a way that... It, it, it's hitting the wrong notes while wearing freaking oven gloves. It makes no sense. It's just mistake ridden and everybody should have caught this. And that's the thing about it is <sighs> I'm not going to buy that it was trying to be a bad movie. I'm just saying that it was just a bad movie. It was just mistake after mistake after mistake. Some of them subtle, some of them glaring, but all of it a just a god awful absolute mess. And as a result, I really can't recommend this movie, not in the slightest, except for basically sitting on a couch with a living room full of friends riffing on it. And in which case, that's just a whole different category. If you're wanting to watch a Christmas horror movie that you can sit down, pop a bucket of popcorn, and be entertained solo-wise, this is not one for you. Because it's not entertaining. It's not very fun outside of making your own fun with it or add it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, just on its own merits, it's just a miserable watch. I can't recommend it. I almost regret watching it. Almost. I reserve that for very, very poor ones. And seven points out of 100, this is absolutely one to pass by. And oh boy, am I looking forward to tomorrow because guess what? This movie has a sequel. Of course it does. And I will be reviewing it then. But for now, that's my review of 2013's Krampus, The Christmas Devil. I really thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. And if you want to support me further, my Patreon and my merchandise storefront links are below. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.